Okay, so about five years ago, I started building this channel. <clears throat> excuse me, building this channel. Excuse me. I'd done a bunch of shows, and the galleries and venues hadn't promoted me. I signed a uh, contract with a major gallery firm, um, an international gallery firm, and in the contract it said, you know, we will promote you, and they never did. So I got frustrated, and I wrote, and I said, do you mind if I start promoting myself? So I started making these, these silly videos, which, you know, has brought me a nice following. But I also joined Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, all the stuff that we talk about every once in a while. But I'm kind of burnt out. Um, you know, things, things got really, really tough for a long time. The past, you know, five years hasn't been easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's been a lot of struggle. And I'm a little burnt out on me and, and trying to trying to be like, one day, you know, if I can do it, you can three. Meh. I'm a little burnt out on it. Uh, but I'm in a place where I can start doing other things, maybe thinking in a better direction. So uh, yesterday I went to two Sarasota, two local libraries, two Sarasota libraries, trying to find books on contemporary art. Um, and, and, you know, something that might pertain to today. Well, the... <laughs> they, there were lots of books on Baroque and classical art and uh, not contemporary art. The most, I found a couple most recent books about Impressionists. So we kind of dropped off at the Impressionist area in the collection at two, two huge libraries. And then we picked up again at Dali because Dali, well, Dali and Picasso, because everybody's collecting Dali and Picasso now. And uh, not to disparage because my own gallery sells Dali's and Picasso. But we, we dropped off at Dali because Dali is in, uh, the Dali Museum is about 45 minutes away. So people would find Dali interesting. Uh, but then it just completely skipped to one contemporary artist and the only black artist I could find featured on any of the shelves. And that was, of course, Basquiat. And it, it got kind of frustrating for me. I pulled off um, books of artists that I love, trying to think about what can I talk about? And I pulled off Rockwell, uh, Norman Rockwell, because he, he, you know, he did influence me. I found Maxfield uh, Parrish, who did influence, or got me thinking about color. Um, got me really thinking about color, and then I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I met his great grandson, who lives about five minutes away from me, and I almost passed out the day I met him on Siesta Key. But I pulled up books on impressionists because the impressionists really affected me. But I'm thinking, who who touches me today? Whom do I turn to for inspiration and to lighten my heart when I get in my dark? dark moods and very, very frustrated and very angry and tearful. Who do I turn to? Who's putting themselves out there today? And, you know, I'm on Instagram, Pinterest. I'm, I'm following all these people and I look at their studios and I look at their work and it hit me. These are the contemporary artists today. Just we're not going to find them on a library shelf. We're not going to find greats like Vanessa German, who I've talked about like my friend Leonard Maiden, whose work I absolutely adore. But yesterday when I got home, I was thinking and thinking and thinking about things. And I hit on an artist, I went to a couple of artists. And one of them is Brian Rutenberg, who does these fantastic videos. He's an artist from North Carolina. And now, oh, I lost my friend. And now he's, uh, well, for the past umpteen years, he's been, Excuse me, let me pull something up. I'm trying to run two things at once here. Uh, three things at once. Anyway, uh, Brian Rutenberg, and here he is, uh, has been an artist in New York City for, I don't know, 25, 30 years. I watch him on YouTube. When I start to get really down or I need to feel like I'm not, you know, need to feel like there are other people in the world who are as passionate about producing artwork as I am. And I, and I need to know that, you know, I can reach my goals if I just don't give in, if I keep working. 
I go to Brian Rutenberg, and it's R-U-T-E-N-B-R-G. And I'm directing you to him because Brian is, uh, he, like I said, he's successful, but it's not just that. It's really not just that. Well, I, uh, his success makes me green with envy. And watching him unpack cases and cases of gambling paints and spilling them out on his table and floor like it's nothing. When most of us are struggling to buy a single tube, it, it gets me teary-eyed. But he seems like a very nice man and I love his videos because he knows so much about art. He can intellectualize his own art and his own intent and his own drive through a uh, classical artist or through artists that, you know, I don't know anything about and I really appreciate it. He's living in New York, so he has endless, she has, he has access to endless reference material. The museums, the galleries, the history, he has it and he's really good at sharing it. And so if you don't know Brian Rutenberg, I would strongly suggest that you find his YouTube channel and check him out. He's right there, there's a table full of gambling. God, I could stare at that all day and just uh, at the world. But instead, I'm gonna go paint in a little bit. Anyway, Brian Rutenberg, endless videos, funny, funny, funny man. Intellectual and just, God, I wish I could shake his hand. Maybe one day, maybe one day. Um, and his work is being collected by museums across the country. Uh, He's, he really is a genius, but he, what I love about him is he didn't walk in the city and suddenly get accolades. He walked into New York and he said yes to every opportunity he was given. Every show he was asked to enter, he entered and he just kept doing it till he hit, hit the right galleries and reps, till he hit people who, who saw the drive in him and have helped him to have a successful career. So it hasn't been all easy peasy, lemon squeezy, but he's, I just, I really respect him. I respect and adore him. But today I wanna to talk about a friend of mine whom I met in Providence, Rhode Island, Dan Lussier. And I hope I'm saying his name right. I've only known Dan for eight or nine years, maybe 10. But uh, Dan, Dan, I met Dan at um, Utrecht's uh, or what is now Dick, Blick's in Pro Dick Blick in Providence, Rhode Island. When I lived in New Bedford, I used to drive in and fill up my truck with, with supplies, with canvases. And it was tickled pink, because I would go to, I would go to um, the Utrecht or Dick Blick in downtown Boston by the, uh, by the Christian Science Center, and I would love walking in the door. And I look at all the canvases and it just felt like a magical wonderland. But I was a single mom and I couldn't afford anything. So I'd walk out with nothing, but I'd stand there and look at them all and dream one day, one day, one day. And then the day came. And so I would, you know, I go to Providence, Rhode Island and load up my truck with, with canvases and, and drive home. And, you know, I had a plan and I was sticking to it. So I bought the supplies that I needed to, to complete that plan. And I, I've been a, a good customer ever since. Not the, because of the company, but mainly because of the people who work there. The people who work, um, work at Dick Blick in Providence are college educated. They're, they're, uh, they're talented, they're personable. Everyone I've met there, I'm, almost everyone I've met there, I'm still friends with. You know, everyone I started meeting there eight, nine years ago, and Dan is definitely one of them. But Dan moved from Providence anyway, back to Dan. Dan moved from Providence to St. Pete. He wanted to change his life. Providence can be very cold. Uh, it can be difficult to get around uh, at times. So he moved to, to St. Pete, and he did. He changed his life. And he's gone from doing, like, 2D and 3D art uh, you know, sculpture and, 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 and some painting to doing photography. I'm showing you his Facebook page so you can find him. <sighs> He's one of those people I go to. I look forward to his posts and I go and I visit. His Facebook page is a lot of personal stuff <laughs> and a little sardonic, 
very, very funny, very personable, like Dan, full of a lot of sports references, which I have no connection to. I don't really appreciate sports, but Dan does. Uh, however, I love his Instagram page. It's he's gone from doing uh, you know two D and three D art to doing these this photography. Providence is a beautiful city, but whatever happened to him in St. Pete made him pull out his camera phone. I mean, he started sorry, made him decide to start doing photography, focus on it. And all he's using is his phone. That's it. He told me what kind. I don't remember. I'm not sure it's relevant. This is his tool of choice now. In many videos we talk about, um, we've talked about just using the materials you can afford. We've talked about it a few times. And I used to be ashamed that I buy my canvases pre-stretched. And there's still people that try and shame me into it. But I know people who have work in the Smithsonian who paint on Michael's canvases in the Smithsonian. I know people who have work in the Boston Museum of Fine Art who paint on Dick Blick or Michael's canvases. And here's the man who's taken a tool that he has at his fingertips and kind of transformed his, his art life and his lookout, his outlook rather, on, on the world. What I really appreciate about his work is he seeing, he sees a lot of repetitive patterns. I mean, uh, it's not going to be very clear. I want you to find him though, because I hope you, I hope that his photographs make your heart sing the way they might make my heart sing. He does a lot of repetitive photographs in sand, and it sounds common, but his quality. And his ability to see, see in this everyday, you know, in this, <laughs> his ability to see these patterns of the beauty and to pull it out of these um, things that we see every day and pass over is really extraordinary. Uh, I, I really feel he has National Geographic quality work. Um, and it, uh, a picture of a horseshoe, but it's not just a picture of a horseshoe. It shows extraordinary depth, a real professional eye for color and the feel of textures against one another. <laughs> Face hugger. And he's funny. Again, like Brian Rutenberg, he is so funny. He's tagged this one on Instagram, Face hugger. Uh, but he, you know, he wanders around the St. Pete area. Oh, don't freeze up again. All right, it's frozen. Uh, so I pulled him up on Instagram, but he runs around, he runs around the St. Pete area taking photographs. That's his Instagram page. It is so deeply compelling and interesting. The colors, the balance, the ideas. Look at that. Unbelievable. I, mean, I see it on my phone and the clarity, the clarity that that he's able to pull out blows me away. He started doing these photographs of the water. Let me see, my phone's very slow. He started doing these photographs of the water. And although I'm not a big fan of uh, seaside, or, yeah, there it is. This is the one that got me. I'm not a big fan of, I live by the ocean, I'm going to take pictures of the sea. Again, he's able to go in and get depth and action and balance. It just totally blows me away. This photograph and several others like it, just, they absolutely kill me. And that he's using his phone as his artist tool now instead of having to go out and buy paint and buy canvas and buy, you know, materials to sculpt with, he's using his phone. So it's just another, it's another artist who has learned to adapt and shift in the most deft way. 
and really excel. I think his, his photographs are absolutely brilliant. I'm trying to find another one. He does photo he photographs, there we go, does a lot of photographs of um, wildlife and insects. <laughs> Sorry, somebody just answered me. Um, photographs and in insects, they kill me. The colors, the brilliance. Anyway, I would check him out. I'm gonna ask that you please check him out. Let me see if I can pull up his name again. Dan Lussier, there's his, whoops. That's his Instagram page. It's, I believe it's Jerry Garcia giving us the finger. But please try and find him and follow him. I think he's an extraordinary artist, um, extraordinary photographer, and a really terrific human being. He took some photographs of um, grave markers in here in the St. Pete area, and the, the taglines kill me. They make me laugh on days when I don't think I can laugh anymore, when I just don't have it in me. So uh, that's, that's my artist of the day, or those are my artists of the day. Uh, Brian Rutenberg and Dan Lussier, L-U-S-S-I-E-R, and I hope I pronounced it correctly, Dan, I don't know. L-U-S-S-I-E-R, Dan, is how he's up on uh, Facebook, or Dan Lussier. Anyway, that's it. Um, I'm going to get to work. I'm going to get to work, and we'll do another live painting session, a studio mate in another state, as soon as I shower and rock Bugsy. All right? Ciao.